In patch 1.99 Starfighters, the British received the Challenger 2 2F, touting the Dorchester 2F upgrade compared to the Challenger 2's Dorchester 2E. Is this new addition worth the hefty grind, or is the British top tier lineup still performing badly in the current meta? Alright lads, today I'm going to be talking about the weapons, performance and playstyle of the Challenger 2 2F. Starting as always with the basics, this tank is a rank 7 battle rating 10.3 medium tank located in the British tech tree. Being a rank 7, it will be efficient at researching all vehicles between the ranks of 6 and 7. The Challenger is a tech tree vehicle, meaning anyone can grind it for free. To start the mammoth grind, you will have to begin by researching the medium tank line in the third rank of the British tech tree. You will then have to grind out every vehicle in this line until you unlock the 2F at battle rating 10.3. It will cost you 390,000 RP and then a purchase price of 1,020,000 silver lions. Going on to the rewards, the Challenger has a base RP modifier of 2.32, which is pretty good for top tier. You can expect an RP modifier of 232% with a free to play account and 464% with a premium account. The Challenger 2's Silver Lion modifier is slightly less impressive, only having a base modifier of 1.5. With a free to play account, you can expect a Silver Lion modifier of 150%, and with premium, that rises to 225%. Being a tech tree vehicle, the Challenger 2F has a fairly high crew train price of 290,000 Silver Lions as well as a pretty steep repair cost of 8,680 Silver Lions. Being a 10.3 vehicle, it has a very high expert qualification cost of 1,020,000 Silver Lions, and for the ace qualification, it will set you back an additional 2,100 Golden Eagles. If you'd like to know more about the Challenger 2 2F, and whether it's worth grinding it out, then stick around for the rest of the video. The Challenger 2 is powered by the Perkins CV12 diesel engine, producing 1,217 horsepower. Combined with the vehicle's weight of 63.6 tonnes, the Challenger has a power to weight ratio of 19.1 horsepower per tonne. This is pretty poor compared to the M1A1's 26.6 horsepower per tonne and the T80U's 27.2 horsepower per tonne. This poor power to weight ratio gives the Challenger 2F a very poor acceleration rate. It feels big and sluggish and rather clumsy to drive around. That being said, the Challenger 2F is still capable of a respectable 59km per hour forwards and 37km per hour in reverse. But as I mentioned, the low acceleration compared to other main battle tanks makes you feel like a fat kid running against Usain Bolt. Being a western main battle tank, the Challenger does get neutral steering, allowing it to turn on the spot. Again, compared to other main battle tanks, the traverse rate for the Challenger 2 is pretty low. Overall, the performance of the Challenger 2F is still out of the current meta of War Thunder. Your performance is just good enough to be classed as a main battle tank. While most other nations have top tier tanks with performance similar to the Leopard 2A5, the Challenger 2F's performance is more similar to the Leopard 1 at battle rating 7.7. The Challenger 2s are known for the high amount of armour protection, and the 2F is no different. You may wonder what the difference is between the Challenger 2 and the Challenger 2 2F is. Basically, the 2F receives explosive reactive armour on the turret sides. This is the same ERA as found on both the Challenger 2's hull sides. It provides 30mm of protection against kinetic munitions, and 400mm against chemical munitions. I will highlight the Challenger's armour using both the Heat FS and APFSDS rounds of the Leopard 2A5 at a distance of 500 metres. Using Heat FS, you can see that the lower frontal plate and upper hull are completely immune from penetration. Heat FS round is only able to penetrate the driver's hatch on the Challenger's hull. Moving up to the turret front, you can see that just like the hull, Heat FS is completely defeated by the Challenger's armour, with the turret armour providing up to over a thousand millimetres of armour protection in certain places. Moving to the tank side, specifically the sides covered in ERA, you can see that the additional armour gives near total immunity from most tank-fired chemical weapons in the game with the hull sides providing around 440mm of protection, and the turret sides giving you 600mm plus of effective armour protection. Moving further backwards to the cage armour, as you can see, this doesn't really do anything. All chemical weapons are going to go straight through this caging. I'm not sure whether this isn't modelled correctly, but at the minute, cage armour doesn't seem to provide any additional protection. Moving on to APFSDS, you can see it is a completely different story. The lower plate only provides around 170mm of effective thickness, making it incredibly weak for a 10.3 vehicle. The upper hull does offer some good protection, with the cheeks providing upwards of 500mm of armour. While not enough to protect you from the Italian APFSDS, it is enough for nearly all other nations APFSDS rounds. Although the upper frontal plate has strong armour protection, the driver's vision port and lower glacis are the obvious weak spots, easily penetrable by all early APFSDS rounds. Moving up to the turret, 
you still have the great hold-down capabilities associated with the other high-tier British tanks, with the turret cheeks providing slightly more than 700mm worth of protection against APF SDS rounds. The gun breach, however, is a natural weak spot. The sides of the tank, while effective against defeating chemical munitions, are very weak against kinetic rounds. As you can see, the sides of the hull provide around 75mm worth of protection against APF SDS, with the turret sides providing slightly more, giving you 100mm of effective armour on parts without ERA and 210mm on parts with ERA. As you would expect, the back of the tank is easily penetrated by almost all top tier rounds. Overall, the Challenger 2F is fairly well armoured, especially when hull down, but this armour is fairly underwhelming, especially compared to the Leopard 2A5 and Stritzwagen 122, which both have similar armour protection, but with much higher mobility. Moving on to firepower, the Challenger 2F is armed with the 120mm L30A1 cannon, the same gun as found on the other Challenger 2. It has the NATO standard 10 degrees of gun depression and 20 degrees of gun elevation. You can carry 50 rounds in total, but only have a very poor first aid ammo count of 4 rounds. The gun is housed in a turret capable of traversing at a rate of 21 degrees per second with a stock crew, and 31 degrees per second with an ace crew. While being better than most Soviet main battle tanks, it is fairly poor compared to other NATO MBTs. You get access to both thermal optics and night vision, something which substantially increases your lethality, as it allows you to easily acquire and identify targets on maps with poor visibility, something I found incredibly useful when playing sim battles. The Challenger 2F gets access to third generation thermal sights, meaning the resolution is much higher than vehicles equipped with first gen thermals. While these thermals are very good, you only have it in your gunner's view, the Challenger being one of the few NATO main battle tanks that lacks a commander's independent thermal viewer. One positive of the Challenger is its very good reload rate. With a stock crew, you can fire every 6.5 seconds, and if you get an ace crew, that decreases down to 5 seconds, giving you the joint highest fire rate of any main battle tank and far better than the Soviet autoloader's 7.1 seconds. The Challenger retains the exact same rounds as found on the early Challenger 2, something that was a disappointment to me. Your stock shells the L23A1, the upgraded round of the early Challenger 1 tanks. At 10.3, this is fairly weak, with 396mm of penetration at 0 degrees, and 229mm at 60 degrees. With this performance, you have penetration levels similar to several 9.3 vehicles making the stock round of this tank rather difficult. The next shell is the good old Hesh round, capable of penetrating 152mm of armour at all angles. While incredibly powerful in real life, the performance in game is very poor, making the round useless against most of your contemporaries. You also get access to a smoke shell, which is useful for concealing yourself, especially in sim battles. It has a hold time of 25 seconds, which gives you a substantial amount of time to make your play. Your last and main round is the L26 as found on the other Challenger 2. This has similar performance to the other top tier MBTs found in War Thunder, with 471mm at 0 degrees and 272mm at 60 degrees. It does get the job done, but you will have to aim for weak spots on nearly all of your opponents. You also have a laser rangefinder, which gives you a precise distance to target in ground realistic battles, as well as an auto laying ranging system in sim battles. As well as your main gun, you also have a coaxially mounted light machine gun, as well as a roof mounted machine gun, both firing the 7.62mm cartridge, making them pretty useless against helicopters and lightly armoured vehicles. Overall, the gun of the Challenger 2 is just as good as the four other big nations in War Thunder. The US, Germans, Soviets and Japanese all have similar gun performance on their top tier main battle tanks. The difference between these nations is more in terms of mobility and armour protection, rather than gun performance. While the Challenger keeps up with the other nations in terms of firepower and armour, it is significantly less mobile than all of the other main battle tanks in the game. At the start of a game, I will typically take around 20 L26 APF SDS rounds, as well as a few Hesh rounds. Being a heavily armoured tank with sub-par mobility, you can't really be too aggressive in this tank. The poor mobility combined with the large frontal weak spot means pushing isn't really a great idea in this vehicle. Instead, taking your time and trying to get into hold down positions is your best chance for putting up a good fight in this tank. Because of this, the Challenger 2s don't really excel in urban combat, where proper cover is hard to find. This means that the Challenger isn't very adaptable, it needs fairly large rural maps to do well in, where it can rely on rolling kills and terrain to provide cover for its whole armour weak spots. The Challenger 2S should be played more as a support tank rather than a breakthrough tank. Allow the Leos or M1A2s to form the spearhead of the push and you support them closely from behind. Your great reload speed of 5 seconds allows you to outtrade most opponents. And while your armour is unreliable, you will get the occasional bounce from enemies that panic and rush their shots. 
In terms of lineups, you have the early Challenger 2, both Challenger 1 variants and the Vickers Mark 7 as your main battle tanks. You have the Roycat Mark 1D and the Warriors as your light tanks, and the Stormer High Velocity Missile as your main air defence weapon. You can also bring along either the Phantom FGR2 or Phantom FG Mark 1 as your close air support plane. Alternatively, the Lynx or AH Mark 1 helicopters are also potent ground attack weapons. To conclude, the Challenger 2F is a nice addition to the British top tier lineup. However, it doesn't really offer anything new. The 2F modification is basically just additional ERA to the turret side, and a few camouflage netting added to the majority of the tank skin. In real life, this netting does reduce the tank's IR signature, but in game it doesn't have this effect. Basically, it is essentially just a clone of the original Challenger 2 with a few parts thrown on. Same gun, practically the same armour, and same awful mobility. While it does have drawbacks, it is by no means unusable. It is just at the clear disadvantages when it comes to vehicles such as the Leopard 2A5. The best way to improve the balance in my opinion, was to give the Challenger 2F a better round, like the Charm 3 or L27 round, giving similar armour penetration performance as the Italian Ariettes. This would allow the Challenger to sit at the back of a map and be able to penetrate enemies reliably. I do personally like this vehicle, and if nothing more, it gives you two spawns and a 10.3 vehicle for the British top tier lineup. Before the patch, if you died in your Challenger 2, you had to spawn in a 9.7 main battle tank, which suffered against 10.3s. Now with the Challenger 2 and Challenger 2 2F, you have two spawns with a somewhat powerful vehicle. If you are a British main, then absolutely get this vehicle. While being slightly out of the meta in terms of mobility, having two spawns in a 10.3 vehicle is worth the large grind. For casual players, or people not really interested in the British tree, then the Challenger 2F doesn't really bring anything new to the British top tier lineup. As always, I hope you found this video useful lads, and thank you very much for watching.